Hello, my name is Detlef Mulaman. I'm professor of human geography with a specialization in development geography here at the Department of Geography in Bonn. And in this short video, uh, we would uh, like to uh, show to you what we are doing in, in our um, team, what kind of research projects we are doing. Not only the contents and the findings of the project, but the idea of this is to show to you how research is done. So something, the mechanics of producing a research. In uh, my own um, career, I've done uh, research projects uh, primarily in North Africa, East Africa, with a focus on uh, Ethiopia. And some of these things you're going to hear from what um, the members of our research team are going to present to you in, in their own videos. I want to uh, focus on a topic uh, in which we are specializing here in this group and which is part of a very large uh, interdisciplinary uh, project, a so-called Collaborative Research uh, Center, a CRC. The Collaborative Research Center, this is somehow, if you like, um, the flagship of research funding in Germany. Big, long-lasting projects of usually something like 12 to 15 um, single projects. And in our particular Collaborative Research Center, which we are doing together with the University of Cologne and with the title Future Rural Africa, we are focusing on um, future making and social ecological transformation. Future making somehow is the overarching uh, goal or interest of 14 disciplinary research projects within the CRC. Altogether, we are about 25 um, university professors from Bonn and Cologne, and also the Charité um, in, uh, in Berlin. And we are all doing something about the question how African fu futures are produced and how this relates to social ecological transformation. So the key interest in this research is that we are looking at the social world and the ecology. And many people are doing studies on ecology, many people are doing studies on the social world. What we are interested in is how the two are related and what this has to do with the way how people living in Africa are imagining and producing and shaping their own futures. We do so with a, with a focus on three countries and rural areas in three countries in Africa, in Namibia, uh, Tanzania, and Kenya. And my own project uh, with three uh, PhD students working in these projects at the moment is called Green Futures. Green Futures and the politics of land use change. And the reason why we are studying green futures is that much of what is currently happening in rural areas in Africa is, uh, if, if in, in parentheses, is green because it is related either to the intensification of agriculture, irrigated agriculture, or the expansion of conservation areas. And you can imagine both these processes uh, require a lot of land um, and if these areas of agricultural intensification and at the same time the areas of conservation expand, we are running into a conflict between these two directions of large-scale land use change. What we are trying to understand in our project uh, and the focus on green futures is how the concept of green growth concept that was originally uh, formulated in South Korea about 10, 12 years ago, how this concept of green growth is formulated into global development plans 
and then translated into the rural context in Africa where we are working. So the question is how a global model of green growth gets modified and appropriated by actors, local stakeholders, NGOs, government agencies in Africa and how this is then implemented in projects. And you will see from the findings of the three PhD studies that we're doing that the situation of green growth and the discourse about green futures is highly diverse in the countries where we are working. In Kenya, green growth is an official political moment where the government is interested to get access to international funds, um, which they use for um, lots of projects all over the country. In Tanzania, uh, there is talk about agriculture intensification, but with the shift in the presidency five years ago from the previous president to the current president, uh, Magufuli, there's a new interest in industrialization. So nobody really cares for green developments. And in Namibia, there's little interest, relatively little interest and potential for agriculture and much more interest in uh, conservation areas uh, and, and tourism, so to attract uh, tourists in order to generate income for the country. So in the end, what we are seeing with the focus on green futures is that uh, the, the coupling between social and ecological transformation is highly heterogeneous across these three countries where we are working on, and all this feeds into diverse strategies of future making, diverse actors who play a role in future making in Africa. And we will see in which way we can continue this research then into the next funding phase of the CRC, which is going to begin in January 2022. Yeah, well, an anecdote. Doing research means you're, you're going um, through adventures, which are not always very amusing. And research means you're going through ups and downs and you're encountering surprises that, that change the situation from one moment to the other. And, and the story I would like to tell is, is just a little example of um, one of these adventures during uh, doing research. That happened a couple of years ago when I was starting a research project in the Sultanate of Oman in southern Arabia. And to get started, I had a number of telephone numbers of people I was told who were uh, knowledgeable about uh, the question I wanted to study. And I was, I was recommended to uh, particularly try to meet one uh, person who, who really was an expert for uh, my field of research. So I, I really made an effort to call him and to take an appointment with him. But in the beginning, he was, he was very reluctant to meet me. That's a very typical situation. Then finally, he gave in and he said, OK, we could meet in town where he met me with a fancy car. And we drove home to his, to his house, which was a very impressive building. So I, I had already been informed that he was a government official somewhere, but I realized, well, he must really be a high-ranking government official. And then when I wanted to start my interview, and I always did that uh, in Arabic with the first couple of sentences, and then we soon switched to, to English because the Omanis usually speak better English than I speak uh, Arabic. When, when we started to get into the interview, uh, the situation was a bit strange because he started to interrogate me. So it wasn't me asking him questions, but he asked me questions, and these questions were very much to the point. So he asked me, why are you doing this kind of research? What is your research questions? Whom are you collaborating with? What are you doing that for? So I realized that he was really suspicious of what I was doing. And then I realized, and he told me about that, that he was not just a government official and a high-ranking government official, but he was somebody working in the police. And that was my impression somewhere in, in the secret services of Oman. So I realized I went home to his, to his house and I realized I was in a trap. Uh, I talked to somebody who uh, 
had the job to control this kind of uh, foreigners uh, doing research on Oman. So a very uncomfortable situation. And then he started to make jokes about my Arabic. And he said, well, did you learn your Arabic in Cairo? And he said, yeah. When did you learn it in Cairo? Where did you study Arabic? So again, these questions. And then he started to laugh at me. And he said, don't you recognize me? I said, why? Yeah, we've been classmates together. We have studied, we've both studied at the American University in Cairo uh, for two years. Uh, he was a bit younger than me, but we had actually taken a class together. And from that moment onwards, we became good friends. He was extremely supportive, uh, very helpful. And we always loved to make jokes about this first encounter when I was intimidated by him asking uh, me questions about what I was doing in his, in his home country. So what you do see from this is um, relations help a lot. Yeah, for young people to get into the field and to do um, uh, research, my, my main advice would be always follow your heart. So do what you love to do. Um, do it with sympathy uh, for the people whom you're, whom you're meeting in the field, but be very careful not to get lost. So one often, when, when you do follow uh, only your sympathy for particular questions, you may lose the sight of, of the grand picture and you may lose the di direction of your research. <laughs>